Goodbye. <laughs> Wait, we didn't talk about last episode. Diva down. Che Diaz down. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. to the most hated person in television history, Che Diaz. Sada Ramirez has been officially fired for <sighs> things. And they're the Monica Garcia of In Just Like That. They are Monica and Che in one week. Huge firings this week. Not only are every, like, Legacy media, st- legacy media staff member getting laid off. Oh my god! But the firings extend into the entertainment stratosphere with Monica Garcia and Sara Ramirez. So Condé Nast fired like Pitchfork, Vanity Fair, <laughs> like everyone is getting f- axed. I don't know the exact details. All I know is that. Uh, Anna Wintour allegedly she was that. the one that had to do the firing and she just wore her sunglasses the entire time coward kind of iconic what do you I, expect her to do put them take them off and like tearfully look you in the eyes and apologize I heard Anne Hathaway was getting a photo shoot done for Vanity Fair and heard about the the walkout so she just like left the shoot she said and I was imagining strong. I was wait a minute I was imagining the vote I was like the montage from Devil Wears Prada were, with Vogue <laughs> As she walked out, every time a car passed, she was in a new outfit, Mm -hmm. walking out. But I love a union queen. Yeah. Honoring those who make significantly less money than she does. (laughs) Um, But yeah, Monica is officially gone. Won't be returning, which we all knew was probably coming, but it's for the best. I thought that she stood a chance because she did provide the drama. But as this reunion dragged on, I realized that She's a flop. She's a flop and my soul can't take more of like her yappy <laughs> energy. Yeah, I mean, we'll get to it. But I think it seems like like in the wake of the finale, there was a lot of Monica standing, obviously. But even now, post last night, I could see the tides turning and people going, it's good. She's not coming back. Everyone kind of turned, I think. Yeah. And you know the real rub and i feel bad for monica because it's like where do you go from here i'd be stressed if i were her but what i love the most is that ld was right she did it up she did she up the reunion it's she also had months in between the like show filming and the reunion to figure out how she's gonna come into this space and redeem herself, give people the razzle dazzle they seek, and monetize, and AKA get hired for the next season. I would have honestly consulted like a media coach or something, get like Anyone. a team together and just like, and not a team of people that are from Salt Lake, like an actual <laughs> like Hollywood crisis management a la Raquel, and mm-hmm. just like figure out let's what's the spin? How do we make myself, yes, I'm the villain, but how do I lean into it in a way that's not unhinged and off-putting and more like, yeah. You would think that as such a diehard fan of Housewives, she would have been able to internalize some of what the greats no. of the past have done in these situations. She too, she flew way too close to the sun. She really did. She got stuck in the mud and she couldn't see her way out. Like she really... You should have listened to your mom. She should have listened to L- a true showman. Mm-hmm. And I kept waiting for LD to come out. Yeah, what the f- Huge missed opportunity. Like, honestly, less Mary, more LD. I'm a little over Mary. LD should get like a full extreme makeover, like undergo like some (laughs) swan-like makeover and then return holding a snowflake as a housewife next season. I will say... LD looks good for her, like where she's at. She does. I'm just like, I'm just thinking about like how she could really stick it to Monica. Yeah, like look get like get like so snatched like yeah. wait there's a surgeon right now who's like blowing up i on saw t- did you see that oh my god every <laughs> every every one was even worse than before it was i have to I pull literally up. <laughs> was screaming at everyone was somehow more horrifying than the last i could not believe I didn't my want eyes to send it to you because i knew like psychically it would hurt you no it was i was injured but it was <laughs> it was it's so, a it's essential viewing and i think everyone must see we all need to bear witness to the horrors that lie beyond the knife what's his name doctor dr kim dr kim is i think he's in korea i think he's in south korea i want to say dr kim is 
Franken Doctor. He's Frankenstein. Which is a bit shocking that he's there because I think South Korea is known for like just like plastic surgery capital. Well, yeah, they're so advanced. Yeah. Um, there's like they're farther ahead than we are with everything. So you would just think that he has his <laughs> together. Oh. This man is changing he's doing like head transplants no like he's how? doing he's doing <laughs> Wait, like can you pull it up he's doing full like it's it's performance art he's so turning people into I art i got it <laughs> i'm really oh. that one's not even that bad this is the. It kind of reminds me of one of my neighbors growing up. Oh, they're pulling on his cheek. What happened to his face? He turned him into the cat man. He's he was handsome too before. Wait, this one was. Crazy. Oh yeah, this woman. It's also just seven days after the lift, so it is like kind of quick to see results that would actually look good. I love the music. Like he's turning people into children, into like jack o' lanterns. They do look. They're they pumpkin look like. like they look like um. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Wait, let me see where he's exactly he's from. Because I, I want to know. It's either China or South Korea. It is it is crazy. I mean, he's... he's They're giving facelifts that are like back to someone's like lower back. That's how much... That's how far they're pulling <laughs> they're people back. They're pulling their skin over their head, giving them a wedgie with it. Before they, they like chop it off. But they all look like he's, he's literally transforming like 80 year old women into like... 12 year old girls like it's it's literally but how is he doing he's like shaving their I jaws don't know. down into like know. a fine point wait let me find this it's kind of performance art that's what i was saying he's he's almost making them like live like living he's art. marina and he is did you see that video of her saying yeah that was pretty cunt mm. but, um i've already had dinner with kim once i, I don't, don't need, need to do it again. i don't need to do it again <laughs> We'll confirm location. Wait. I saw a South Korean flag on one, so that's what I decided. But it's it's literally like it's like in um Men in Black when Vincent D'Onofrio like pulls his face back and he's like, Is this better? It literally looks like that. Some of them I'm like work. No, some of them they're all Some like of them I'm like slay grandma. Like imagine <laughs> your grandmother looking. showing up to the to like family dinner looking younger than you. Is it a face? Is it? It's a facelift, right? It must be. It's a facelift, but there's like, are they might be getting like eye surgeries too. Some of them might be getting like canthoplasties or like eye widening surgeries. And like, I think that there's something happening with like a, I think there's like bone being shaved down. Well, he's, he's making them all look like filters. People's heads have, they positively change shape. No, they're they're not. They're changing human. Like they're changing. They're kind of alienish. or whatever. Yeah, they're, it's like fully like. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the one white guy that was like, I'm going I'm to get in on this action. Yeah, he's like some like Eastern European guy. Was like, I'm going, and he didn't look that bad before. No, maybe just a little Botox. I was really. Con I'm concerned about many of them. A lot of them were like, a lot of the women were like gorgeous women before. I think. Yeah, and like they were like beautiful and like looked their age and like some of them already had good work done and i was like when i saw what they'd undergone i was truly like what did you think body what modification you thinking? it is i would be really afraid to face my loved ones looking like a 11 year old well, slut. seven days <laughs> afterwards is not the time to like come out of hiding no like, you have he should to give have it waited. at least like three months to really see how things are working but like it is shocking to see those it was it was it's it's one of my favorite like things going around on tiktok right now i smashed the follow real fast 
because i oh, need yeah, like so i always you. need like a horror element to my tiktok and yeah. this is really providing because i also like to put myself in the headspace of like what if i woke up looking and like i was like Lantern? full botched what's the guy's name from nightmare before christmas i wanted to call him jack sparrow jack skellington jack skellington they look like turnips <laughs> <laughs> or like they're radishes like yeah, yeah, they're they radish look, heads. They look like jack lanterns carved into radishes. I want someone to do like a mock up of me, what I would look like. He needs to have a filter, like a Dr. Kim filter, oh, so that coming. you can do your Dr. Kim like facelift results. Um, there's also this amazing fad going around of like people doing like what I would look like in the 30s. Have you seen that? And it's literally just like. It's like a black and white. One girl literally had still had filler, like <laughs> lip filler in. I was, wait, I'll it's show like you. It's like Lala in the movie yeah. where she was in the 1940s. <laughs> when she's like this. She literally, she, this is like, this is what I would look like in the 30s. <laughs> Long flowing hair. <laughs> I've, been trying, I've been trying to do some of those the, like cap cut things. I did the Grand Theft Auto one just for me because I wanted to see what it made me and it like, I didn't even look like myself. I was like, how are people getting this to like be representative? Like I did the Pixar one of Tony just because I wanted to see, mm -hmm. but it didn't even look like him. The de-aging TikTok that was big like a few months ago, it was frighteningly accurate. It actually... Wait, I, the aging one you no, mean? No, the, the one that make you look like you were in high school, a teenager. Oh, I, I didn't do that one. I then. literally looked like I did when I was a senior in high school. It freaked me the f*** out. I was, I was haunted like, by the one that made you look old. Oh, yeah. And and everyone was like, this is what you're going to look like old. I know. All the doctors made TikToks being like, that is your future. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Oscar snubs, <sighs> surprises, expectations dashed. What besides Barbie was like the upset? I'm sick of the Barbie discourse. I'm, I'm bummed that none of the May-December casts got nominated. We... We should have done our campaign. And I, again, am sad that Todd Haynes didn't get a nomination for Best Director. That's really f***ed up. They got Best Picture nomination, which is amazing. Okay, that's cool. Um, They're not going to win that, though. I hope they... I mean... What if they sweep? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Past Lives got... It's the same people that did May December, same producers mm -hmm. did Past Lives. And so they got... So that's great, but... Wait, did May December get a nomination? No. Oh. But they got Best Adapted Screenplay, Sammy Birch. That's cool. So I hope she wins because that is an incredible screenplay. We need like one May, December win for the love of Christ. No soundtrack. What's it going to take? I don't know. Honestly, our billboard would have changed things. It would have. Get this gay and Oscar. Mm -hmm. No costumes. I think the costumes were amazing. Like I just, I was so... Poor Things has to win costumes. Oh, yeah. I mean, There's was... like no f way. Um... What else? Annette Benning and Jodie Foster sneaking on in at the last minute. Huge Nyad wins. Okay, here's my. You watch Nyad. I finished Nyad yesterday. I loved it because yeah. it was a swimmer movie. I loved. I love Annette Benning, Benning playing a lesbian. No one plays a lesbian better than Annette Benning. A lesbian has a lesson to learn. Yeah, and like is kind of a little unlikable and just kind of hard bit of an egotist big of an, yeah big of an you know very uh self-centered um but she did the damn thing and she swam amazingly like i loved annette's form um, i love a form way in from a swimmer she went through a lot for that role like she she, she definitely got, did her body looks snatched i would not feel comfortable asking like a 60 year old man or woman to perform as Nyad. But also like the the kind of body horror she under she went like with the salt and her lips swelling up and like having to wear that like very safe she was like <laughs> safe in that outfit with the mask. Her jellyfish protection mask. Um but I, I thought it was great. It was inspiring. It is and like just just the fact that a sixty year old woman did that I is know. like shonking. Well there's now and then I was reading a lot about Nyad and she's been she was accused of that like f making that up like there was some there's some naysayer other marathon there's swimmer. nyad truthers there's a man who's another marathon swimmer and he's like get I'm in not, line i'm not convinced that she did the whole thing oh, shut the f up yeah f why you. don't you do it did, he i mean he like did he's done like a lot but he's claiming has he done that one no but he like he's like done interviews like there was a profile about him where he sits down and he's like i don't believe her i think she made it up she's she has a history of fabricating things what yeah so i was a little like for a second i was like 
is Nyad a liar? And is then this I, dirty b- a liar? No, after but, then, all? but then I was like, no, f- you, man. Like, she's incredible. She I'm swam around man, New York City. I this man killed. I want him killed. She swam around f- New York in the East River. We've got to find him and put an end to his his f- naysaying. I won't say his name for legal reasons. His f- days are numbered. But of course there's a f- guy like truthing a lesbian in Gosh, her 60s. Just let a let, lesbian lie. Let, let a her... six-year-old lesbian lie. If she's lying, more power to her. Yeah, and like if she like got on the boat for a second and like drank water who f- cares she swam from he thinks that she like touched the boat yeah she thinks like th- some like technicalities were like overlooked oh shut the f- oh, shut f- up. up she swam from cuba to fucking florida like that is unbelievable do you know how scary it's that is unbelievable it's 100 miles of hell that is like such a dangerous 52 hours straight of swimming unreal having- i would not last 30 minutes so she's nominated. Jodie Foster was snuck in as a nomination for so, and she was amazing in that. And Jodie's I, so f- hot in that. She's so beautiful, but she kind of plays like a um. Her character is a little more like not sub, but like she's sweeter than she usually plays in movies. You know what I mean? Mm. Like she's very like she's not hardened. No, and she was sweet, and I love their friendship. Like they had a pure platonic love story between two women, and you know what I mean. And I loved it, and I thought, you know. After everything that, after I saw the things yesterday, I was like, I hope Annette wins. This summer, my goal is for my summer body to be on fleek. And my whole look is Jody's costume design from Nyad. Oh my God. Like, I need the Oakley sunglasses. I need the like hair handkerchiefs, like a longer short with like a cutoff. You have to have some like sinewy arms to do mm. that maybe throw on a pair of tivas She's i'm channeling like elder floridian lesbian this summer hell yeah yeah like kind of and i know people were hating on me for saying captain sandy i like captain sandy from <laughs> Duck, but she's a florida lesbian yeah you I'm, want that like people tan- are like it's mafia wife like looking mob wife is trending on tiktok like it was like coquette girl no mob wife but by this summer it's my goal to make Floridian elder lesbian, the new TikTok aesthetic. So, but I feel like Annette could surprise and win because just because she's been nominated like eight times or something, and like, is it time to give her the? It's time we to love you, the girl, goddamn, Oscar. Yeah, we love you. Thank you for all your work. She should have won for Twentieth Century Women, which was an incredible movie. Mm-hmm. No, it would didn't wasn't my fave, but I, I didn't it. hate it. She should have won for Miss Julie or American Beauty. Yeah, she was great in that. Um, or The American President. <laughs> <laughs> Love that movie. But she's been at it for so long and she's f- married to Warren Betty. Like, Warren, Warren Beatty. Betty. <laughs> Warren Betty. <laughs> Betty Boop. She's married to Warren Beatty's. Like, give her a goddamn statue for that. <laughs> yeah, just let her have one. Anyway. Um, but yeah, Hillary Clinton today told, she tweeted said, Greta. Go Nyan. No, she tweeted Greta and Margo like, you Don't. might not have gotten the nominations, but you have millions of people who love you. Girl, please. And she goes, you are more than Knuff. And then she hashtag Hillary Barbie. I was like, see your way out. Stop. In this holy ele- in this unholy Please election year. Please don't. I'm Hillary like gonna Clinton, cry. You need to pipe loop us loop out. You need to see yourself out. I don't want to hear from you until this year is over. Yeah, take I your loser energy elsewhere. You are gonna you are gonna jinx this year. I know it. And I'm sorry to like be saying that about a lady who like got that far. But I'm like, sorry, but like I can't. Shut I, up. Shut up. I don't want to hear from you ever again until the end of the year. It's very loser behavior to identify another loser in the culture and then <laughs> s- t- tie your loser hit your loser train to theirs like don't do like why would you do that also i saw someone tweet like to be like these men keep us down every time no and it's, it's like not no. that big of a deal also Greta's no one even good. likes the oscars greta and margo are great yeah margo robbie made 50 million dollars so like Their everyone's made, fine yeah greta made she's the highest grossing female director she of all will time work again she's good she's been nominated before <laughs> unlike you she will get another job <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> And she also, I saw someone tweet like, do people want there to be like a hit out against Sandra Holler or something? Like everyone's (laughs) raging against. Who's that? 
the anatomy of a fall why are they mad at her well she got nominated for best actress and she was in zone of interest wasn't zone of interest didn't that get a lot of noms it got best picture best director it should have gotten best soundtrack mika levy Mm, it should have but best sound she's nommed for anatomy yeah she could win too she's it serving left and right she is but like people are like mad that Margo. They're trying to come for her. No, I just didn't, pe- they made a joke, but it's just people are so mad that Margot's not in the category that it's like, and and that people are mad that Ryan is, like, a, of course a man would be nominated in the Barbie movie. Oh, and it's like, well, Ryan was great. Is that bad? I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over like trying to make something slightly political, frivolous more political than it needs to be I'm it also, can just be like a fun movie that people enjoyed and made a lot of money for a lot of people i'm also over people like thinking that they know more than or people being like this is why you're wrong for this thing in media or like film it's like oh are you a academy f- member are you in the academy you make a f- movie yeah write a f- screenplay hustle your little bustle to sell it get it made make it make money make people watch it get in the academy and then f- vote yeah stupid f- seriously honestly and like when people are tweeting about bravo and they're like here's what i would do if i was it's like shut up you are like in accounting in washington dc you only get to say what you think about bravo if you have a podcast yeah and that's that um wait we need to talk about the ra- the waves 2024 Q1 is the year of rogue waves. That rogue wave in the Marshall Islands. So it, I hope those that lady is okay. I think everyone's no one died, and there's only minor. But it, they said it never happened before. That late, <laughs> I'm of the mindset that like, if there's a rogue wave in the area, you can count on me to not be there. Like yeah. the last thing that I'm ever doing if a rogue wave comes to town is like standing like sipping a stanley cup like watching the wave come in yeah. and then take me out through a glass door so this there was that this, lady was not moving fast enough this military base in the marshall islands in the south pacific it got struck by like an insane <laughs> powerful rogue wave <laughs> this powerful wave of all and it like knocked them all the f- out and apparently it's like never it's like very unprecedented that it happened like this um and there's footage that is like actually let me pull it up i was literally like I pray these people are all right. Yeah, where's Viv? Where's Viv? Did he catch her? (laughs) Anyone got eyes on Viv? Jake, are you okay? Also, nothing scarier than looking out and seeing a flowing surge of water against like the black night sky of the Pacific Ocean. Like, are you kidding me? Water is so violent. Did you see San Diego? What? It got flash flooded and people were literally like houses were getting like washed to sea. Like just f- completely flooded. There's a video of this girl and her brother moving through the streets like up to here going like, we just lost our home and like screaming for help. I was like, what? The coastlines, they're going. Um, but yeah, Pro- rogue wave. To be inland. Yeah, for proud once. To- <laughs> <laughs> but the, any rogue wave. I'm out. I'm out. I'm not standing around watching a for a rogue wave to take me the f- out. No. I'm not going down tsunami style. That is on the list of what's not going to happen. You're not going to be Naomi Watts in The Impossible. Absolutely not. No. I will die in an earthquake. Well, you might. <laughs> yeah, we before might. I will rogue wave. Uh, or an earthquake and then a rogue wave will come. <laughs> By the time the rogue wave arrives, like if there's an earthquake and yeah. somehow tone... If there's an earthquake and Tony is taken, but I'm alive, I take myself out instantly. But if we're both alive, but pe- pinned under rubble, and then we hear that the rogue wave is coming and it's going to come like 40 miles inland, <laughs> <laughs> we're both taking a cyanide pill. I, like- I refuse to let a rogue wave take me. I'm in about to. I'm about to publish like a legal document. Your will, your last will and my testament. My last will and is, testament is like if a rogue wave's coming and I'm in the war path, you have legal right to shoot me in the f- head. <laughs> Wait, just I need I need us to watch this one more time. We need to watch Viv. 
Viv, oh, Viv took it the worst. They're all in the dining hall too. They're all like wearing like pajamas and just kind of like what late night. What are they night. doing in there? They're just, they're she just was chilling. lingering for too long. She was carrying a soda. Please, if you're listening to this podcast, you know who Viv is. Can you just, just do a give us a check? Viv yeah. report? Give us a wellness check. Um. Oh my God! Also, I'm haunted by the Kansas City. Isn't that scary? What the. F- because it's kind of on. your like region, right? Like that whole like Kansas City. Well, is it Kansas City, Kansas? It is, right? I think it's Kansas. Okay, Kansas is cold, right? It's cold, but like, I was on this tip last Wait, year. Wait, ex- can you explain what happened? So, this man had three friends over to watch a Kansas City Chiefs football game. And are they going to the Super Bowl? I don't know. I don't. I have no. Yeah. Um, so he had his friends over to watch football as one does. And then they were like, we're going to go home. And he's like, bye. And then days go by and they're missing. And then someone goes to the house and they've frozen to death out two in the backyard and one by the front door. And the man is... I mean, has a lawyer and is like using his lawyer to speak. But like, how did that happen? Well, yeah, they said the police, I think, have determined that they don't believe foul play was happened. But what? It's very Diatlov Pass. How are you just like going to freeze to death? How is it? I mean, God, it it's must... not that cold. I mean, it. I don't think you you don't freeze to death like instantaneous. It's not like it's so day, it's not like the day after it's tomorrow. It's not like it's so cold day out that you're like <sighs> maybe it's maybe, not. Maybe there was a maybe like there was that. a sudden surge. Kansas City is a cursed city. I can say that <laughs> with certainty. Um, but is it so cursed that you literally f- flash freeze? Um, parents, okay, tell. So New York Post today, parents of Chiefs fan found frozen to death along two friends in yard think Trio is drugged and dragged outside by scientist pal. They think he concocted something. This house. That's a house that you would freeze outside of. It looks like the Idaho murders house kind of. Oh, don't even talk. We can't. (laughs) Very... And Many were, such cases of cursed ass houses. This the scary thing too is like all these men were in their like mid to late thirties. Like they're all like You're just you don't you don't just like yeah. walk outside and freeze to death. That's like not how it works. So he thinks so they think that the man whose home it was is a HIV data scientist named Jordan Willis. Damn an ally. He, he's respected. And he's strenuously denied knowing anything about the plight of his three dying friends, maintaining he was asleep inside with headphones on. Okay. But like, if you if you said, if you bid farewell to your friends and they're at your house, like if someone comes over, I mean, I don't live in a big house by any means, but like if someone comes over to watch this TV no. and then they're like, I'm going to go at night, like I'm when I'm turning off the lights or closing yeah, yeah. the blinds. I would notice if they were then frozen to death outside. <laughs> like that doesn't make this any sense for days, for days. Look how sweet they look. I know. They're like straight bra- bears, but for okay. days, what he's just in his house. Was for, he asleep for days? I mean, I think it was like a few, was it not a few days? I think before it was they, overnight. I and then was, the next morning, I think morning, he woke up in the morning and they were like, this man is true detective night country. So his dad, what the dad said of one of the men who died, he, my son might have done some drugs and stuff in the past, spoken like a true parent, but I do not believe all three of them did drugs and fell over dead in that backyard. It's yeah, really like if freaky. one of them fell over, wouldn't the other two like go back and be like... Well, he, the dad said here, you're talking about three grown men. If he was out there just freezing, like they said, he would have kicked out a window to get in the house. Like, yeah. Yeah, you don't just like lay down and freeze to death. And certainly three people don't do that. Like if one was... Do- 
It just is very strange. Okay, but now the now one of the mom is her, this quote makes her sound like a like she's starting. She goes something that comes to mind. This this guy whose house they're at, he likes to brag about how smart he is. He's a scientist. My thoughts are that he concocted something and gave it to all three men. So now they're getting a little like. But you can't. I'm sorry. People don't just like drop dead and freeze outside of your house overnight, and you like don't know what's going on. Um. Yeah, I mean the you don't freeze walking ten steps outside of a house. Not if you're that, like, "Ooh, I'm cold," then yeah. you go right back to the house. You don't sit there. No, like, it's like I don't they understand. They walked out. It makes no sense. I mean, not not that we trust cops ever, but the captain of the police department investigating said it's not being investigated as a homicide the captain of the police department held a press conference and said yeah (laughs) wait okay another this is also from today a fifth friend at the chief's gathering claim fans found frozen to death in backyard were inside watching jeopardy when he left so he left the bros switched over to jeopardy yeah he left around midnight. He arrived at seven. So they were still alive. If this is true, they were still alive in the early more hours of Monday morning. So when this were they con- found? Monday morning, I guess the next day. But if this is true, this they're saying this contradicts. Um, well, the guy's attorney's statement insisting that this man whose house it was saw his four friends out at the end of the night then went to sleep on his couch. So there's some kind of confliction going on. Do they all like to fentanyl or something? I mean, it was pretty cold. But I would think that you would have to be outside for longer than like just a few hours to freeze to death. Also, Mm. those guys are kind of big. So like they have a little bit of more padding. This is the guy whose house it was, the scientist. Hmm. Hmm. We're on the case. I mean, this is creepy. It's really weird. Oh, that's one of the. Oh, he was cute. He was. It's sad. Like just a bunch of. It's sad, sad when, when <laughs> it's really sad when cute men die. When cute straight when men cute die. Straight men freeze to death mysteriously. It really. It's a, nothing hits harder. It's a wild story, though. I mean, it's really bizarre. There was a story from like the eighties or something that I've heard people talk about on like those like YouTube compilation videos, like (laughs) 10 creepy stories that are actually true. Like the AI narrated ones. But there was number one. It was like five friends were driving from a home from a basketball game somewhere in the Midwest. And they all were like Minnesota or something. And then they all disappeared. And then they found them in some remote cabin in the woods and they were all dead because they'd all frozen to death. But, like, they don't know how they got there, and it's still, like, a mystery to this day. And, like, one was, like, outside, few were in the cabin. Mm. I don't know. Also, never underestimate men being idiots. True. Just being like, oh, f- what do we do? I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. Yeah, for, like, hours, and yeah. then just slowly freezing to death. <laughs> that's just, what if that's the verdict? Just, these are just, no, I mean, no, no disrespect to their souls. Like, may they rest in peace, but... Wherever they are, may they be warm at last. But this, and, it's weird. People are going to find a reason to blame Taylor Swift for this. I feel bad that Taylor has to energetically take this on right now in her year of happiness and possible matrimony. That house. This is a, this is where murders happen. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. <sighs> Shall we get into... Yeah, let's get into the real murders. Our other frozen ladies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Podcast. Salty, Salty Utah Frozen Frozens. Ladies. <laughs> Wait, we need to talk about Heather's whole new look. Did you see her new face on Watch What Happens Live? No. Did One she moment, get like please? Dr. Kim surgery? I think she's on a hefty dose of Ozempic. Oh, is she skinny? She's skinny. And she's out here looking like Chris Shell. Wait. Doesn't she look like Chriselle? Wow. Her her like hairline. I wow. think she got like a chin implant. 
She's, I don't know. She's looking great. She looks amazing. Yeah, no, she's serving. Flaw free. Um, so we come up and Andy just looks over at Meredith and he goes, are you mad at me? And she goes, <laughs> what do you mean? And he goes, you keep, you keep making these faces at me and I can't tell if you're upset with me or not. She goes, oh no. I'm just, <laughs> and I was like, Meredith is stoned. She's <laughs> in pills. <laughs> she's, she's not mad at you. She doesn't know where she is. She spoke two times during the last segment of this reunion. She was silent going like this. Maybe Whitney and, ha- and Meredith like popped a pill together and just were like, they because they were both pretty quiet. But Meredith was like, I love him. He's like, I looked at her. Sh- I thought she's so mad. She's not coming back next season. <laughs> she's like, what? No. No. Um. Everyone, Mary is still out in the mix. <laughs> God bless her. She... She gets away with murder. Yeah. She's kind of like, I know like I've like, I love to see her chaos, but she's getting to a point where I'm kind of like, it's getting a little played out. It's getting a little old, like do something else. Well, it's like you can let her get away with so much, but you also kind of have to hold her feet to the fire. But the way that she's positioned is that like, if you say anything to her, then she'll leave. But I feel, I do feel like they did a good job of phasing her out by the end of this season. I kind of forgot that she was ever in the mix. So I think that they could have a next season with no Mary. I'd be fine with that. I'd kind of be fine with that too. Maybe like a once in a while check in with her where she can cause a little like, she should host another big luncheon. Yeah. A once in a while check in with Mary. Like one, she comes in for like one or two episodes, but other than that, I don't need her on watch what happens live. She's overstayed her welcome in my book. A little bit. Yeah. Um, Andy is like, even though there's a lot of drama this season, the ladies still had fun. And then they go, go to all their, their, Palm Springs trip when they were doing drag makeup mm-hmm. and Lisa's freak out where she goes, I forgot she said this. She goes, I have glam in Monaco. I have glam in Paris. I have glam on call every day. And th- while they're showing her freak out, you just see a little, the screen you see, you hear Mary going, this isn't good, Lisa. It's not a good look. <laughs> Which I was like, and Lisa's laughing. I forgot that when Lisa was having her glam meltdown, Meredith just came in and went like this. She knows. Strong hugged her. She's a sister. Sometimes when your bestie is freaking out about the thought of having to take their makeup off and put (laughs) other makeup on, the only thing you can do is give them a strong, sturdy pillar hug. Sometimes when your your bestie is like (laughs) completely delusional and you know that what they're doing is make they're making a fool of themselves and just unhinged, all you can do you can be like you're being unhinged right now. Or sometimes you just hug them. Just hug. Just hug and be like, it's okay. Just supportive, I get it. strong pillar hug. Um, Mary says, Andy goes, so do you really have glam every day? And she goes, Lisa goes, every day, every morning, I have glam. I get it done. And then I'm glam and go. And Mary goes, that's really a sign of insecurity. And I was like, okay, Mary. That's f- Rich. rich coming from mother god over here like I know. you you have rich people coming like, from like miss plastic surgery I know. Got her your glands, glands removed yeah, i was like that's when that i think this is like my my patience for her has been waning in the last since the last reunion episode and really moments of this season but i was like shut up yeah please enough enough but also like don't banish me to hell yeah um I like that they just kind of, they don't even like acknowledge when no. she says rude things anymore. I no. think because they, they all know that she's unwell. Yeah. And like, I think they also know that her days are numbered. Um, And then Monica says something about them being old again. And Lisa oh, goes, yeah, she's like, no one acts 55 like you guys do. And Lisa like, goes, okay. She just laughs and she goes, you got to stop with the age shaming. You're not good at arguing. Get better at arguing and make better points. Gagged her. That was true. I was like, shut up. Monica got gagged left and right. She was bound and gagged by the end of this episode. The age thing, like, first of all, she's not even that young. And second of all, like, there's only, you get like one or two times where you can be like, <laughs> I'm just a little younger than you guys. This, the whole age thing, and just in general, not, and I'm not saying this because I'm about to be 35 and I'm feeling like in gay years, like a 
crone. I'm certainly not saying it because I'm about to be 40. Well, okay, but I'm just saying. But I just think like. People being like, they're old. Like, but shut up. Shut up. And it, death scythe comes for us all. Mm-hmm. Sands of time. No matter who you are, you can do a Dr. Kim. You can pull. <laughs> you will get old. It's coming for us all. Accept it. Have respect for it. And don't age shame. If that's the only thing that you can fall back on as a burn time and time again, you really do just need to get better burns. You're not that smart. You're not that smart. And it's also like if it doesn't because the ladies didn't have never really reacted to that. Like it's not like that hit no. a nerve that like sent them no, off no, no, the no, cliff. No. So it's like, babe, read the room. Like. Pick a better dig. No, at least they were all like, it was like nothing. They were like, yeah, whatever. I hope to look that good at 55. Yeah, me too. Um, Pull my tits into a silver dress. Yeah. Have shiny mermaid hair. Um, Angie does an amazing impression of Meredith, which <laughs> Meredith loved. She was tickled. <laughs> Angie's fentanyl impression of Meredith. Meredith was, she was, she was jabolling. <laughs> and then Mary... They ask Andy asked Mary because she when she was on with Z Way mm-hmm. that iconic Watch what Happens Live where Z Way which just kept going like this and was like what when she was she wearing like a Louis Vuitton like corset Heather they showed Mary a picture of Heather in a corset like a Gucci corset oh, and Gucci. then Mary said uh, I don't think that's I don't think that's real. And they were like, oh, you think she's wearing like fake Gucci, which is like, I'm open to this conversation. But then Mary goes, no, I just, I mean, I don't think that they make it in a size 14. She also kept calling it corset. Corset. And then, and sh- and then Heather, she goes, Heather, I just want to say, I'm sorry that if you were hurt, but I was not body shaming you. I think you look great in it. And Heather goes, thanks, Mary. <laughs> I'm obsessed with actually saying that you weren't doing something that you clearly did and people just saw footage of we yeah that's mother god status that is mother god um so just like a yo-yo i go back up standing (laughs) i know you've got to respect her um we find out that meredith churned her butter after shaking it for hours and hours and hours and sent heather a video of her at a restaurant going would you mind if you put this on a plate and serve it to me, this fresh churned butter? That I churned myself. And it was in like a little doggy bag box. In New York. Where I she kind lives. of love that. <laughs> yeah. Did she fly back to New York? I swear I'm a truther. <laughs> she was a Balthazar. Wait, but also Meredith, Andy was like, Meredith, have you and Mary ever had disagreements or fights? And she goes, Mary and I have had words off screen. We have had words, but I feel I know how to navigate her. So I'm like, I like more. I want more info on that. I know their friendship is underexplored. Yeah, the churning. But I was like, they're at like Lucian. (laughs) (laughs) Odeon. Meredith flew. She immediately went from Bo Peep Gate to hopping on a plane. Still churning. Meredith goes straight to LaGuardia. From she does go straight to the airport. <laughs> she, she goes to Teterboro. As soon as they're like, and that's a wrap on Meredith, everyone's like, woo, Meredith. And she goes to the airport and then flies uh, back home to New York. Her commute, literally, she wakes up for a shoot in New York, gets ready, gets on a plane, and shows up for her real Housewives of Salt Lake City call time I'm in convinced. Utah. <laughs> also, I'm living for Lisa's Sundance. She her coverage continues. What is she up to at Sundance? She's just daily updates, just going around. God, I'm so sad that I missed Sundance this year. But the only difference now is that she's a star, so she and now everyone's going up to her at Sundance instead of her being behind the scenes. But she also probably has a lot of behind the scenes. Oh, for stuff sure, she's do. working a lot. You can't interrupt Lisa when she's in her Sundance Mm-mm. flow. Um. So Monica does they... a Lisa Barlow impression. I know. Mary does a Wild Rose impression. Yeah. Which I think Heather laughed a little too loud at. Yeah, I wasn't into that. Because Whitney showed Heather a lot of grace this episode. She did. She was she was really into Helen. Um, they talk about Bermuda. 
And Monica basically is like, okay, yes, I was part of Reality Montees. I did not start the account, according to her, which is, I don't think, true. I'm obsessed with Andy going, Monica, are you Reality Montees? <laughs> and she said that the women you. weren't the focus of the account and it was just to expose Jen Shaw for being abusive to her employees, which I'm like, you're... And then Heather brings up the receipts that RVT was calling her a the T word, Shrek, and then T slur word, and that she, and then also that she wanted to be, yeah. They, she was like, why then did you post this about me? And it's like screenshots of like Jen going. <laughs> tranny shrek and then she's like no we weren't calling you that we were just reposting it and she's like but when you repost it and put it back into the world then it's like me experiencing being called that over and over yeah. again she's like no we're trying to show that it's mean to do that and she goes exactly that's why i don't want you to keep sharing that and then they're like He's like, how many times did Reality Von Tees, like tag you guys? And Heather goes, every single day. <laughs> she goes, no, we didn't. And he goes, let me see the phone. And he scrolls for years and years. He goes, this is like hundreds of tags. Imagine getting tagged by Reality Von Tees every day for years. And then thinking like that would be really destabilizing to be like haunted by I reality get- von Tees, and then find out that this f- new cast member on your show is the account that's tagged you yeah. every day. I get like in some way, like I have like thoughts about Heather at the end with the Jen Shaw thing, but I and people saying, why was she more mad at that? Like I get why she was so rattled at, on the trip and it's why she creepy. needed to call why she needed to call like a tribunal on the beach because this is someone that's like specifically was the meanest about heather and it's like every day you wake up you look at your instagram mentions and you're like great reality von Tees is saying that shrek thing about me again and then like the next day you wake up and you look at your mentions you're like great reality von Tees is calling me shrek again and then like for days and days like groundhog day Three years of this reality of aunties haunting like, her every move. Saying the like saying despicable Just things about you. Reposting the worst things that anyone's ever said about you. And and then finding <laughs> out that that's your coworker. That they're staying in the room next door on a trip that you basically like put together with her. I would be freaked out. Yeah. So I get. I get like. I get why she was so like on edge about it, and I think Monica is just such a bad liar. And she is like a sociopath. She's a liar. She doesn't see like she's like, I mean, at one point, Andy goes, I mean, it happens later, but he's like, you seem surprised that they're upset about this. And she goes, I am surprised. But and for for a minute, a few days after the finale, I was sort of like, I'm wishing that it would have been even more juicy if for seasons reality von Tees has been in the background terrorizing these women i know i wish that they had fed reality von Tees for years and years but it also is like made it weirdly even more, the more i think about it it's almost more impactful that it just came out of nowhere and that it was almost so unspeakable for all of them that they like never shared it because it was just too like <laughs> Well, because like I'm sure Reality Von Tees is one of hundreds of accounts that yeah. do this kind of shit to them every day. So like once you're aware of the people that continually talk shit about you online, you kind of like they just exist. They take up like brain real estate. Like you're always going to be like Reality Von Tees is at it again. Like add it to the list of like the five accounts that just like relentlessly troll me. And then to find out that someone, not even someone you know, but like someone that is now working intimately with you, that you're on vacation with, is this person that you've thought about for years being like, I hate that this thing mentions me. That you've like been alone with, that you've been skiing with, taken out to lunch. Like, you know what I mean? Like, been she's been in, wasn't she in Heather's house at one point? Like, 
yeah like up. just meeting up with and yeah. like kikiing like would be... friends and then the whole time and for her also andy made a good point which was like you led with like the affair that you had why not just come into the mix and lead with this well she goes i did and he goes when she goes the first interview at my house that casting did they came over and i told them and andy goes really because i feel like i would have known that and she goes they did it, it happened i told them and andy goes all right he goes that's not true we wouldn't have cast you if yeah. that was true and she goes well okay it is true i was like no you're a f- liar a crazy you're a crazy liar. person you're she was i knew it was gonna come out because production knew the entire time no they didn't know and i they didn't know they didn't um also, it's just like why not this is when i'm like you're stupid because she couldn't put it together you could have if you're not gonna lead with that and be like it could have been a good mid-season like crazy reveal that then you like bounce back from and even like it's just interesting to see these people drop the ball so bad that it because it's like on reality TV, to me, it's never too late for a redemption. Like, if you play your cards right, if she came into this reunion humbled and was, like, telling the truth, apologizing, explaining how it all went down, like, it's not that hard to do that. And even if you don't believe it, just, like, you're an actor, like, act. And for her to come in just, like, fully guiltless continuing to lie and morally like on a high horse a moral superior superiority with that she has no she has not earned it's like you are you are reality bounties so then she brings out the worst thing i've ever seen on a reunion she this goes, also don't you think this was mean girls spawn con that was planned ahead of time maybe but i think it was that's true and i'll it, tell you why to, <laughs> to me it just came off as like elder millennial cringe it is say. that not to age shame but no, like but i was it, like you, she felt i was like you're corny as f- for this no but here's what i think okay i think you know how um because who makes mean girls paramount plus paramount universal paramount i think housewives i don't know housewives typically like have movie deals movie deals where they like promote movies oh i know but right now (laughs) i think people are experimenting with that form and being like do the movie trailers that they make like really make sense or would it make more sense from a financial level to do actual baked in spawn con for this thing and i think that this was a deal where they said because there's no she that isn't real i don't believe that she did that burn book to look exactly like it say the exact same things with those pictures like how would she have found that picture of lisa barl i don't believe it okay and on snl they just had renee rap so i think that this was like a peacock nbc universal wide how do we bake in spawn con and hype for this movie they had like renee rap and like rachel mcadams made a surprise cameo on snl yeah. so i think this was part of it is like oh we'll just ha- give her a burn book for the reunion i hear that and i think that's a good theory and i like i could totally buy that my devil's advocate theory is that she just did this on her own and thought it would be cool and everyone was like girl it's not cool the timing is too she goes, like, i did it myself and then she does it. want it she, you see andy she's like there were receipts in there but at first just a little fun there was a picture of Andy being like with the devil horns saying he f-ed half of New York. And then there's a picture of her doing the Regina George. Like this is the fuggliest. This isn't. Biatch. She's a liar. That's what I, I have to counter your theory with the theory that she's a liar. And they picked a good a liar to lie about the origins of this thing. And he goes, oh, uh, Heather goes, look, she's this is a picture of her. She goes, that's me. I wrote it. So it's, it's supposed to be about me. And I went, girl, I was like, we got it. We got it. We got it, Monica. Because like, I think that Monica did show, was going to show up with like a folder of Reality Bonte's receipts. But then the spawn con element is like, what if we put the receipts in like a burn book? I swear. I No, I think that's a good theory. I, um, I also just, I buy that she's like really like thinks she's cool. I mean, she is someone that just buys random fabric and sells it on Etsy. She calls, there's one a page of Lisa saying Lisa Barflow. 
He's like, where did you get that picture of me? It's the worst picture of me. But they all just like, everyone is just sort of like, it's just, everyone goes, it's not cute. Like, and then you can tell she's really embarrassed. They set her the f*** up. <laughs> Whoever, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Agency. They were like, go for it, girl. This is going to f- kill. You're going to slay. You're going to be, a, the gays are going to gag. Get your burn book out and show them what you've done. Oh my God, the gays are going to f- worship their mother this new mother has arisen this new supreme <laughs> and she's like yeah okay i'm i'll, I'll f- do it <laughs> i'm gonna get the burn book but i here's the thing though she did that whole reality von T's like shoot i could see her just it, like like meticulously copying the burn book and doing it i really could just seeing her out of thinking it's cool and that people will be like <gasps> and then realizing like no you're you're not cool no, no, no. you're not funny it's just not it's just like oh it's awful. And you could tell she was like, <laughs> that's what LD meant. You f***ed that up. Oh, she you screwed fucked the pooch. up from, from you shit the top bed. to bottom. She shit sh- the bed. LD had her f- read her like a cheap novel. I just wrote, why is Monica on the show? <laughs> it really did get to a place of why by the end of this. So Lisa reveals that Monica is the one that filmed Jen throwing s*** at her assistant, which I love that video. I so love I'm, that video. I'm but happy that, that kind she... of stuff didn't make me think that any worse or better. It actually kind of made me be like, go off. This is hilarious. No. And also like, she was like exposing her as like an abuse, like whatever. Like, yeah, she probably had her own reasons, but like she did it. It added to the Jen Shaw lore um, in my opinion. But Monica apparently installed security cameras in Jen's house and then all the women are like, you, the reason you know certain things about us is because you logged in and like could watch and spy on these security cameras. She goes, they were my cameras. They were my cameras. But it's like, no, you installed, she asked you to install them in her house and set up an account. But then the women are saying that she logged in and Lisa was like, that's the moment where you talked about me with Snoop Dogg, like getting on a jet with Snoop Dogg. And it flashes back and it, it she's like, there's no way you would have known that unless you watched this like security footage. Cause like I never told anyone that like the only way you would know is if you watched it. And then it flashes back to that thing where Lisa's like, how would I've never told you that? Like I've never That's told you creepy. that. That's creepy. That's creepy. And she's a liability. No. And like, that's like, that is not normal. Like even if Jen is like the most repulsive person, which in a lot of ways she is like she's like a true criminal jen yeah, yeah she's a f- mob the, boss like when we'll get to the heather part but when it's like i forgot like now knowing everything that we know and getting like the full scope of like what she was up to and how it all panned out i'm so like truly shocked by like jen the morning after like her the, her face oh. i was like this is like a criminal activity. at play. She's like a kingpin. She but, is. But the fact that she's using, like, she's trying to justify using, see, like, basically private cameras to, to, like, spy. It's like, you have children. I mean, Lisa says that. It's like. She have four kids. You have four kids. They go, a- you drove by Jen's house, like, 20 times. They were like, you're always driving by Jen's house. You're always driving over there. And, and she, she goes, goes, no, I'm not. I'm not. And they go, you literally are. Like. Why are you driving by her house? You're stalking her. And she goes, I did not stalk her. I did not stalk her. I drove by her house three to four times. That's what you do to ex-boyfriends. And it's like, yes, that's called stalking. No, and someone goes, it wasn't three or four times. It was like upwards of 20. Dozens of times. And then she goes, okay, well, the FBI contacted me (laughs) to try and like bust her for drinking and driving. And I'm like, not only are you a freaky stalker, you're a rat. No but also, one, that's not true. No, but you don't. Sorry. And also... You don't link up with the FBI. You cannot trust the FBI. To take it back to this TikTok video that did get a lot of hate when I said the FBI isn't looking at reality Von T's to, like, prosecute Jen Shaw. I know. Shaw. People were like, yes, they are. Don't you know how the FBI works? Nah, they nah, often nah, look at social media. Nah. Nah. I was like, no. Hear me now. The FBI was not looking at reality Von T's to prosecute jennifer shaw but she she keeps saying like she's just trying to make herself like so essential to this narrative and it's like you're still reality von tees 
Like you're still in that place. No, she is. We're like, it's her. Like you're she's like, so. That may, be, that may be true. What you say may be true, but you're still reality von No, you, you still are and will forever be reality, reality von Tees. It'll be the biggest thing that you ever did with your reality life. Reality von will haunt you until your death. Yeah. And so, but I'm like. Here lies reality von Here lies Tees. reality. Mother. It'll be Monica she did Garcia. Not serve. Mother, daughter. Monica Garcia. Monica Fowler. Monica. Monica Fowler Garcia, mother, daughter, reality von Tees. <laughs> no, but it, it literally will. So it's like you're like loved of, mother, hated daughter, no, no, notorious reality von Tees. FBI rat. Wait, but the FBI did not. Ask, no, they did. The FBI doesn't ask informants to drive by and check whether someone's she, drinking here's and driving. Where the conversation went. <laughs> hey, it's me, Monica Fowler Garcia, and they were like, oh. Hi. And she's like, think of so, reality Von Tees. And she goes, yes, no, that's no, 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 no. She called them and was like, hey, it's me, Monica Fowler, <laughs> aka reality Von Tees. And they're like, okay. And she's like, so as per our conversation over email, I will be doing a drive by today of Jen Shaw's with one of my trusted <laughs> associates. And if you want, you can, one of my, and if you want, we can take video and surveil for her being doing some kind of misdemeanor to catch her in the act. How about that? What if we do something like her drinking and driving? And they're like, yeah sure i mean we're like we've tapped her phones we've got her and they she's go, like who are cool. you who are you again it's me monica fowler garcia aka reality von Tees. she goes hey monica garcia you might also know me as monica fowler aka agent fowler here and i'm ready to put operation von Tees into play are you go and they go what the f- are you talking she about goes, so we're a go <laughs> And then you she says, s- I've got my binoculars and I'm ready to case the premises. They go, ma'am, please don't, don't case any anymore. premises. Don't please stop calling here. We do not understand what there is no such thing as Operation Von Tees. Okay. She goes, got that. Agent Fowler copies. She goes, got it. I have to, you, mum's the word. <laughs> Covert status activated. And they're like, uh, okay. Yeah. Don't. Please don't interfere. Just, I'm approaching the shop premises now, so I will hey. hop off, but I'll call you after. So I won't pop off. <laughs> I will be popping off if needed. I brought a gun. <laughs> the ladies go, you've stalked Jen 20 times. A, we have the videos. <laughs> Wait, there's a show. video. In the video, she's with some gay and they're like driving and they change his voice. <laughs> so you hear him being like, let's, let's get this boot. <laughs> She's just, we're look, here, look, we're look. here, we're approaching Jen's house. Like, I wonder if she'll see us. I got my f- binoculars. And the gay goes, <laughs> and then she, she goes, oh my God, I'm wearing a disguise. And oh my God, Jen looked at me. Jen looked at me. She looked me right in the eyes. Broad daylight. Where are your kids? Are they at school? You have like a three-year-old. You have a three-year-old at home. Where is she? You're, why are you out here like stalking a grown woman? Doing drive by. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the FBI asked me. Don't drag them into this. I love that. That's like the final. That's an iconic lie. Um, and then Lisa goes, you're a horrible person, Monica. And then Monica goes, I'm not a horrible person. Horrible people murder their children. And I was like, well, uh, wait, I was I also mean- like, I was like, okay, yes, that's true. <laughs> but there's a lot of other ways that you can be horrible. Like what <laughs> you immediately went there. I was like, all right. I'm like, well, you attempted to do with a high heel when you <laughs> fell down the stairs at Angie Kay's house. But I was also like, this is a glimpse into her internal world. Like, yeah, that's, that's also... some dark shit. Um, but I just, I'm obsessed with the drive-bys. <laughs> this is Agent Fowler, aka Monica Garcia. I'm ready to put Operation Von Tees into play. They go, man, who is this? Or they call again and they're like, hold please. Reality. <laughs> Reality Von Tees is on again, and they go, oh, fuck. They go, not f-ing RVT. They're like, we're just trying to set up some, like, people. Monica, yeah, if anything, she's going to, like, ruin the investigation by, like, driving by. They probably have, like, vans parked outside of Jen's house. Like, a man is, like, coming to check, like, the cable wiring, trying to, like, plant stuff. And meanwhile, Reality Von Tees is driving around in her rented Range Rover, like, just f- up their entire operation so they're like so you were a snitch like you were and she goes i was a witness and then angie k has an incredible monologue where she goes and you you're nothing but a dirty what did she call her i forgot a dirty something rat out of the gut crawled out of the gutter and monica goes brown 
a brown rat, a brown rat, a brown rat. And she goes, I didn't say brown. She said like something else, but Wait, she didn't. She was trying to make it like a race. No. Thing? Yeah. And Angie Gay goes, I didn't say that. And she clearly did not call her like a brown rat. And Monica oh, goes, God. but then she does the crate where she just goes, oh, brown, 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 brown rat, brown. And just keeps repeating. I was like, this woman is reality from tease you know what i heard too in that moment this is what angie said <laughs> you're a f rat i'm totally against rat okay this is us you're a f rat i'm totally against rat okay i was watching clips of mob wife saying i was like i might need to do a rewatch it might be time. It might be time to get into season three or just watch Big Ange's spinoff show. I watched it, but it made me kind of sad. I kind of liked it. Okay. She's just partying. In one, in like the first episode of her show, a woman like falls off of a hot tub and almost oh. like breaks her. Her, her sidekick. Start. Her party. I like her party girls. You're married to one. When Renee goes, I don't like rats. And she goes, well, you should. You're married to one. <laughs> Um, I don't like rat. I don't agree with rat. I don't agree with rats. <laughs> um, so then we got to finally, we got to Jen Shaw. Well, Heather for, says the worst. She brings up like the reason reality on tease is a horrible, horrible thing for her personally is that the worst thing about being a housewife is the social media element. That and was I true. Was like, That's very true. And she looks at Andy and he, and Andy kind of goes, yeah it is he goes yeah i mean i tell every housewife that i'm like amazing so like could you make it stop <laughs> <laughs> no can do no no we like it um but we still want to be bartenders and watch them no morning. we do yeah. and angie k like they talk about that they talk about like they're like it's horrible and she's like they come for me they come for my business they try and discredit me i'm a pillar of the community and they're trying to take down my business and then monica pipes up saying something or the other shut up and angie k goes you're not a businesswoman." and monica goes don't you dare discredit small shops i was like all right <laughs> girl fabric don't you dare discredit Fabric. Don't you dare discredit Don't swaddle you fabric. Dare discredit small shops. I love small shops. Don't you dare discredit buying fabric at a store and then selling it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare discredit buying that fabric, cutting it into squares and selling it for $25. I am a businesswoman and a mother. Don't you dare. Don't you dare Don't discredit, you dare small, discredit business. small shops. That's what I'm going to say. Not even small anyone... business, small shops. That's I'm... If anyone tries to come for us. I'm going to say, Don't you dare discredit small shops. Don't you dare discredit <laughs> small shops. Next time someone leaves a bad review, someone said, uh, we got a comment. Speaking of haters on social media, we got a comment yesterday about our video. Why do these two sound the same? And I went, because it's a joint slave. Because I have high tea <laughs> and I'm trying to work on that. Let's check in in six months. <laughs> when I get some peptides in the mix. <laughs> but until then, don't you dare discredit small shops. I want it's a droid slay. <laughs> <laughs> because the I FBI know. the FBI asked us to sound similar. Yeah. F you. Man. Shut something. up. Why don't you start a f Yeah, podcast? you start a f pod. So then we got to the like Jen Shaw black eye gate from San Diego. <sighs> the last trip Jen ever took. <laughs> and the last I, dance. Rem I, I still can't believe that they've never been able to go international because of Jen <laughs> Shaw. Because they kept a criminal. That's also a little bit wild to think that Bravo kept a criminal employed on a show that was literally beating the shit out of people. I know. And terrorizing people for three years. So Andy's like, so Heather, Jen did give you the black eye on that girl's trip and she goes yes and he goes what happened and she goes well i'll tell you what happened everything but exactly what happened <laughs> and i was like great I'm obsessed with i'll tell you everything that happened i don't remember she's like we got blackout i was like okay just it make something up make at something this up. point in the game I, I was like, because I used to be like, they were, they were scissoring. I know. Well, then but I thought we were going to get the scissor moment. But now I think it's just, I think Jen just punched her. And clawed her? Yeah. Because she had the claws on her arm. I think Jen just got angry and had an outburst of drunkenness. Like really Heather made us like a, 
a joke. silly little joke. And she and she clocked her. And she clawed her and punched her. I really think that. I think which is even that's so scary. I wish it was something as harmless as like rough sex, but like they But also that's a horrible feeling to like I mean, I've had many many a horrible instance of waking up and not knowing what happened the night before and then freaking out about it for many various reasons. But to I've never woken up with a black eye and claw marks on my arm. I have. I'm actually like, I have actually. Two, <laughs> Two black eyes. I mean, I've actually woken up under much worse circumstances yeah. now that I think about it. But, but it's. But to wake up with that. Yeah. In your. To be a. Gr- let's just put it this to way. To be a mother. To a, be a mother. A to be in your 40s. Yeah. And then experience something like that would be incredibly the- jarring and scary. Yeah, and I think and knowing that it was your friend. Well, then we get so we get like unseen, previously unseen B-roll see, like surveillance footage of Jen rapping on Heather's guest door to, at the on the trip in like the early morning light coming in and like sheepishly sitting and you can't hear the audio but Heather explains that Jen was basically like they were talking about the black eye and Jen was like, you got to cover for me. And Heather was like, I got you. So, but Jen, her body language, her sort of sheepishness, like it pointed to she punched her for no reason, except she's just rageful. Like it's a really scary, she's a scary person. And you can see even now Heather's like, I'm really, I'm very afraid to talk about this because I'm afraid of her still. She said she still gets threats. So like, then I was thinking, Reality Von Tees is one thing, but Jen Shaw is like, we don't know half, we probably still don't know the half of it. Like the fact that she's in prison and still can like Instagram is very oh I know wild make, to make, me make statements she's making she's putting up Instagram stories well she, it's like it's kind of like and still denying it I'm like the jig's up you're in behind bars well it's like when a mobster goes to prison and they get like spaghetti dinner but it's like you know Heather was kind of alluding to the fact that she like I was I, in my head I suddenly was imagining like Heather getting frequently getting like obscene phone calls and like a heavy breathing or like zodiac style or like you know golden state killer which Going is like, so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah and just like little freaky shit or like doorbells ringing like i bet jen or heather's still freaked out that jen's gonna somehow hurt her from prison jen could send someone yeah we d- this is what i'm saying we don't know the half of it with well, jen, jen Shaw. probably now is gonna link with monica and we all know that Monica's capable of driving by her house 40 times but if jen already had contacts outside of prison imagine the contact she's making in prison like jen needs to stay in prison for the rest of her life like i'm sorry i take back everything i said last season <laughs> I where know. i said don't send her to jail she's innocent i actually think she's a menace to society and should be kept behind bars for quite some time like Kohlberg or whatever she just needs to be she's better off we're all better off everyone is better off if jen is incarcerated and i do not feel that way about most people but she is a person that i feel strongly that it should at least be the 11 years if not more (laughs) sounds like someone's pogo sticking outside (laughs) the, the the surveillance footage really freaked me out it really felt true crime Mm-hmm. and like it felt like the last scene video or something like it really freaked me out and it and you can tell heather is like and i i was frustrated with her for not sharing what actually happened but like i could see the fear and cousin whitney she feels it from over the room and she goes can i come hug you and heather and then, does not answer her no and then she comes over she and just, just stands and then kind of does the hug she she puts heather into her breasts and just sort of Come here. Cousin put Lan. your head between my wild rosebuds. What about me? <laughs> Wait, but like, how did production not figure it out? They just had that kind of BTS footage and then they just said like, we're not gonna... What I think was like, because her, the walls were closing in so hard on her and I think everyone knew that that was like her last time on the show before she went. Like everyone knew it was coming. And I think... Like Heather, no one wanted to to add any more to the chaos. 
So I think if production knew, maybe they were like, I don't want to get implicated. Well, then, but then because Andy-, Andy says like, you went around telling all sorts of lies and joking about it. And then at one point you implicated production and then. Which is f-ed up that Heather did that. Yeah, but I'm also like, how could they... Now I'm like, how could they not have known? But that makes me like, that is f***ed up. Because people have been fired from shows. Like, Phaedra got fired. Like, people have been fired. Like, why... Yeah, for doing that. So why isn't Heather... Like, that's a little like, what's the deal? Well, because Heather's coming and... Heather decided to get off her ass and earn it this season with Reality Von Tees. And then she also is doing what Monica should have done, which is being like... I am so sorry, like giving a long apology to like Andy, the other coworkers, the wild, fans. Wild Rose. The wild, sorry to you. Yeah, that was, te- that was weird when Heather didn't respond to Whitney. Yeah, I was like, ooh. <laughs> but Whitney came anyway. The Wild Rose will always grow. It freaked me out though. It was really freaky. And then the flashback of her and sunglasses sitting across from Jen and the way they talked about it. Cause I remember just being like, what the f- is she saying? But I'm also like, maybe this is also just like her coping mechanism of like smiling or whatever through like a weird time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I feel like also Heather kind of liked the attention. Well, I think Heather Okay, this is kind of this might be Is that is it kind of just her the Raquel in her that was like this is so awkward I like don't know how to process this except kind of laugh and be coy? Well, two things. I think Heather, when you're abused for that long, there's probably some sick vindication that you feel. <laughs> Excuse me. There's probably a little sick satisfaction of like everyone kind of maybe knowing that people are probably thinking this is what happened. And you know what a true horror this person is. Like they're even worse than anyone knows. And I know for real because like I'm not only am I privy to it, I've been like scarred by it. Do you know what I mean? Physically. And you get to, but then you also on the other end get to have like a secret with your bestie. Yeah. And, and she gets to have this like girl I got like we're ride or die. Like I'm going, but you also get the satisfaction of knowing that like, Maybe this will be when people finally realize like what truly a, a monster she is and I will be like free. Mm-hmm. So I think there's like a, a few things going on. Also, the Raquel, epi- Rachel going rogue chapter three was actually really interesting. Was it her and a therapist? Yeah. I haven't listened yet. It was interesting. She's spilling tea. No, she just was like, I'm really like, I want to get to the bottom of like why I talk like this and like why I smile so much. Why she does. Hey. Yeah. And she was like, people like make fun. People complain about to me so she's like i really want to unpack like why do i do this so she had this amazing therapist on and she was sort of like that is rogue it was rogue and it was i actually was getting a lot out of it which was like what the maybe therapist I need to say re- i'm gonna i'm things. gonna maybe i just <laughs> <laughs> why is this like the new huberman labs podcast like I- rachel goes rogue is my north star it made me sad that i was like enjoying it and getting something out of it but i i felt never like- in a million years did i think that a podcast created by one of the cast members of Vanderpump Rules would rise the ranks to be one of my favorite things in the world. No, she basically was just like, you have maladapted to like pleasing and like you... Do you have to bray like a little sheep when you talk? And she was talking about like energy needs to get released and anxiety is energy. So like when you're feeling anxious, like you find no... You're, you have no other coping skills of like how to like process it or like set it aside to process layer later so you need to get rid of it really fast so laughing is your best way to get at to expel it so you're just so all the times you're <laughs> it's her actually just releasing yeah that and, tracks for me like i never really had a problem with her laughing at things because i was like she's just a kooky queen like but to know that it was because like she's pretty much 90% of the time like retching through like pain. Like this. Yeah, she's hanging on by a goddamn thread. I knew that when I mean, I kind of knew that the first moment she even opened her mouth. You don't you don't speak like that unless something is like gravely amiss. But it kind of made me I respected her for like let it, examining she's on a real she, healing she held the mirror up really hard and like was really looking in and I and I I have to say I was She better be getting paid for this. I think she is. I need her to make a million dollars. <laughs> I don't know if it's a mill, but I think it's I just don't like, think it's like I but, get and I'm proud of her for doing that. I'm very proud of her. Me too. But like I 
also, she, I know she's probably. What am I even saying right now? I'm like, I, I know, know she's doing it for herself, but like, I don't think she owes it to like her haters to examine this in a public manner. But then I was like, this is kind of meta because she's sort of people pleasing doing that. I know. That's what it, that's where I'm like, okay, like but, I congratulate you for the advances you're making in both podcasting and science and psychology. But like, she's doing the biggest breakthrough in psychology fully ever. No, yeah. doctors will be studying Rachel goes rogue. But I, 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 I would give it a listen. I think the, the therapist, I'm going she, to. they don't sound like a hack that comes on some of these, like they sound, she sounded like the real deal. And I was like, I was getting some out of it. I love that. Um, but I think Heather too is a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. And I think she, I was both annoyed at her and felt really bad for her. And I and I got the chills thinking about how scary Jen is. Yeah, she's and how wrong we were to stand. <laughs> I feel guilty every day. Wrong God once again. Day. Sometimes <laughs> we get wrong. fooled. I admit, and like like yeah, Monica yeah. should have done. I admit, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong about I had Sandoval. The wrong read about Jen Shaw. Justice for women for a little bit, and then I realized. Look, I'm still for like prison abolishing prison, yeah. but I'm also. Keep, her, keep Jen in prison. Yeah, keep her away. Keep her locked away. Much like Monica, like I need an alert for if Jen Shaw's anywhere within like a hundred mile radius of me. I agree. And like Monica, like that is like high alert. And it's just sort of the ending. Monica just kind of fades at the end. She's she knows this is like she. I think she knows she. She doesn't even try. Which I'm like, you truly are a puss if you can't just like get your. I think it's also like I've been through situations and groups where I've been targeted and screamed at and like you have to learn how to like get yourself out of those situations like at boarding school that's like every we had like housewives reunions every three times a week essentially (laughs) so like but you have to like get your together and like give the people what they want so they get off your back and like adapt well she kind of did the that thing where she did at the pioneer dinner or lunch where she just kind of pouts and i'm like you're an only child and what she did at easter too where she sat in the corner and frowned that's creepy don't do it it's it's like very stunted behavior and like i've i've had periods where i've done that in my past where I've been like youngest child alert, like I've had a frown moment or two. Frowning, but it doesn't get you anything except other people being uncomfortable and annoyed. Yeah, and judging you. And judging you and being like, I don't want to be with this person again. Play ball. Play the f- ball and be like, if I'm going out for the last time, I'll hold that dark and stormy up high and I'll cheers these. And then I will come back as Reality Von Tees 3.0. <laughs> or at least be like, you know what? Like, Andy gave her a moment, too. Like, there there was a... She did take some sh- but she did get the opportunity to be like... At that very last second, she could have delivered a tearful monologue that would have... Redeemed her. Redeemed and maybe, her. And maybe secured her a spot. And probably gotten her a job. She and couldn't. she just fumbled the f- bag. She really did. She choked. And LD was right all along. LD, mother was right. And she knew, I think as she was sitting there, she knew L, my mom was my right. My mom's going to f- ride me hard for this one. She knew. She, she, she knew she was going to go right back to that little house of hers and fight. House of horrors. death with her mom. What if Monica her like. Her mom is going to take her Range Rover away for this. What if Monica takes Reality Von to like the next level and starts like. She probably will. Up. Like, it's all she has. Pipe bombs. She goes to full Joker mode. Well, there was that really creepy documentary on Salt, on that bomber in salt lake city oh yeah hmm. i want her to go like folia do with really funny. <laughs> it's all she has left are her blankies she'll start a podcast i think she's writing a book oh, i don't want to read her me book it i mean I, I do want to read about the affair i don't but i also am like i see how she had an affair she's like a teenager yeah teenagers love having illicit sex I don't think she's a sociopath. I think she's a a stunted adult. Yeah. I think she has the emotional intelligence of maybe like a surly 16-year-old. And I, I, I empathize with someone that had a bad parent growing up. Yeah. I think she she didn't have a chance, really. And I, I know, I do believe that she loves her children. I do think, I really feel that. And I think... 
there's still hope for them, but I also empathize with them that that's their mom. I'm sad for her eldest. Yeah. I think she has a really rough road ahead of her, but I pray that she like can figure out how to make the best of it and like truly heal. Well, she has her sisters. Monica didn't have that. That's true. So, but sometimes you can still be torn apart. But sometimes, don't we, what with siblings? Mm-hmm. Don't we know it? <laughs> but like, <laughs> I need that. El- I'm like. From eldest to eldest in dysfunctional family systems, I'm like, just reach out. But when you turn 18, because I don't talk to children, <laughs> but like, I'm here for you. You want to be like Miranda Singh. No, I'm here <laughs> for you when you turn 18 and you need to process things. Shoot me an email. Maybe 22. I think of age is okay. fine. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not trying to groom. No, I know. I'm just, <laughs> you just never know what these what people you know what i mean we could talk about family and family only yeah we're not talking about romance um but i'm it was a whirlwind season i'm glad that it provided and i'm excited it really did was joyful it was enjoyable and it was filled with lols and drama unlike vpr i have faith that next season will be great i do too because i do think much like the best seasons of roni the women have found their characters and their individual characters are so strong that it can like continue on. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what Angie brings next. I'm excited. Whoever the new one is. Mm -hmm. Um, I love what a Greek person can't own a business. Wait, Lisa also like kind of low key defended Jenny. Did you remember that part where someone, she was like, if we give you a second chance, that means we would have to give Jenny a second chance. And who's Jenny. Remember that one who was like, like supporting the insurrection remember that one <laughs> season two who had the picture of her like holding up like machine guns being like oh my god like, either she was like my queen she like knew people she at literally had, like six. an ar-15 yeah. un- posted on she january was 6th crazy. like she was like we f- ride i was like my girl maybe this isn't the move <laughs> maybe this, i don't think this is the maybe move, this Jenny. time you just keep your politics to yourself like, or close friends only <laughs> yeah keep that that's a close friend monica thing. is though reality von tease is parallel to an insurrectionist in my book yeah it's a, it's its own form of insurrection i'll be stewing on that for a minute think about it but you honestly might be right. i'm kind of right Re- Reality Von T's energy is the same energy as the insurrectionist. Yeah. Burner, like burner account, oh. burner gossip accounts and like burner Bravo gossip accounts is very January 6th coded. Oh, I stopped myself on my own account. I tweet, I quote tweeted a annoying Bravo account and like making fun of them. And then I immediately <laughs> deleted it because I was like, they're going to get me. I won't say who They'll it come was. for you at night. Um, um, but yeah, I thought. Oh my god! It's You've over. You've come so far from Jenny's era. I know that was. Well, I think society has come. Soci- it's a visit. We. It was a different world was when Jenny was around. COVID times. Wow. Oof. Much to think about. Let's do our cult shout out, and okay. I just want to shout out the two listeners that I saw on Saturday night. I went to Schwartz and Sandy's for the first time. Stopped in for a little drink, and did you have a mocktail there? I just surely. Nice. Simon had a mocktail. It was really good. Their cocktails um, are good there. Yeah. Um, but I, I met two really cool ladies, or I believe that's how they identify. And <laughs> <laughs> can't. Anyway, thank you for coming up. I really it made my night. We love it when you come up to us in public and say that you love the podcast. So if you ever see one of us, any, literally anywhere, literally if I'm like screaming at someone on the street, please interrupt and be like, Feel free to interrupt at any time and Please. be like, I love SUP. It truly makes both of our days and yeah. lives. Like it gives us reason to live. You're never imposing. No, not one time. Ever. Even if I was like getting held at gunpoint and you were like, I see her, but like, <laughs> should gonna I say something? Her. I don't know. Just say something. Please. Or if I'm holding someone at gunpoint and you feel like, oh, I shouldn't. She's like trying to rob. (laughs) Just like, just interrupt and say, hey, oh my God, thank you. Maybe that'll give the person time to leave too. Yeah. Um, Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Elizabeth. You are cyber bully. You are. An internet troll reality (laughs) bonties. Lucy from London. You are reality bonties. Brooke Johansson. Cyber bully. Internet troll reality bonties. Reality bonties. 
Brittany Ryan Weiss. Associate of Reality Von T's Internet Bully and Cyber Troll. Danielle Mick Von Millen. Yes. Lady Swamp, which gives no Absolutely Von T's. Lazara Von T's. Lazara Von T's. Malzatov Von T's. Malzatov Von T's. Mary Von T's. Mary Von T's. Mike Earhart, Earhart Von T's. Carrie Oates Von T's. Von T's. Sharon Baum. Von Realtor. T's Realtor. <laughs> Realtor Von T's. Realtor Von T's. <laughs> Ross Stanley Von T's. Von T's. Owsley Von T's. Owsley all the way Von T's. Mariah Con T's. Kathy West. Kathy West. Rochelle Martizo. <laughs> Kit Mortiz. Von. Kit Von. No, someone wrote hashtag Hillary Barbie. Oh, wait, someone. That's really good. Hillary Barbie Von Tees. Orlando Von, von Tees. Patron of the Farts Von, von Tees. Nick Sidieri. Sidieri Von. Nick Von. Emily Von Tees. Von Tees. <laughs> Emily Von Tees is a good name. <laughs> it is. It's like Emily the Strange. Yeah. Kim Lucas. Von Tees. And Jeffrey. Prada de Tees. 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 Guys, thanks for going through that. We have VPR coming up. VPR debuts next week. The flop of the century. Why weren't we at the premiere, by the way? You had to like pay to... They sold tickets to the premiere. Oh. You could buy the ticket to go for $200. Oh, f- no. I was pulling out of my gym and I saw it at the Palladium and I was like... You were triggered? Well, no. I was for a second. I was like... Why did I know about this? No, I saw online like you could buy tickets to go. That's so VPR. So them. Selling, publicly selling tickets to your premiere. Anyway, guys. Let's talk about can, selling tickets to our show, though. Yeah, you can sell. You can buy tickets to see us coming up in a month. Come to the Bourbon Room. Come to the Bourbon Room, February 25th. Come to Oklahoma, to Oklahoma City. City. March 1st. Oklahoma City and Dallas are so me-coded. It's actually f***ing on tees. Austin is selling really well. Austin's doing really well. It probably will sell out by the end of the week. OKC and we need a little more Dallas. Get off your asses and buy tickets. LA. Come support a local legend and don't discredit small shops by not buying tickets. LA is doing great. Let's keep going. But Oklahoma City and Dallas, we need we need your love. We need the hive to von tease it up. And return for Laura. Come for Laura's product will return. I know I need to reach out. Yeah, with the word on. And you call me threat. Oh, God. <laughs> Bye. Bye.